This is going to be a quick video covering exporting a mesh as an FBX from Maya. There are many things that we need to make sure are in place before we export an FBX. I'll go over some of the basic ones and then some of the uh, other considerations afterwards. So the basic workflow is that first you need to combine all the meshes that you want to combine into the one export. So by default, all of these things would be separate objects that I could select in object mode individually. And what I want to do is select them all and then click this little button up here, combine to, sel to combine selected polygons. So that's mesh and combine to combine mesh and separate to separate those meshes apart. The next thing is wherever this pivot point is, that's the little middle gizmo, and whenever you select your mesh, it's going to be there in Unity. So if I press E to rotate, it's going to rotate about that point in Unity as well, or whatever your game engine is. So now is the time to set your pivot point. To do that, I can select my selection tool in the top left here, or I can press Q and select my model, and then Pressing either the W, E, or R keys will bring up your move, your rotate, or your scale tool. So let's use W. And what I'm going to do is press D on my keyboard, and that's going to select the midpoint of the model. And then I'm going to move that to wherever I want the center point to be. So maybe it's, it could be the bottom here if you wanted to rotate around the bottom like that. For me, I'm going to move the center point to the middle of my well. So I'm going to press W for move, D to select the midpoint, and then going to grab that, holding V first of all snap the vertex, then clicking the little center point, and I'm going to move it right onto the center of my model here. In fact, I'm going to move it to 0, 0. So I'm going to hold X, that snap to grid. I'm going to move it right onto the center of my grid there. And now when I select my model with my W, E, or R tool selected, I will have that midpoint exactly where I want it to be. This may be important when you bring it into your portfolio viewer like Sketchfab because I think the midpoint is a center point that the camera automatically focuses on whenever it comes into your model. So we've set our pivot point using D to select the pivot point and then holding V to snap the vertex or holding X to snap to the grid and moving that into position. The next thing to do is to set the transformations to 0, 0, 0. So as you can see from my channel box and layer editor, at the moment my translations are all set to 000, and the attribute editor I'm sure will show the same thing. But just to be sure, what you want to do, in case you've moved or rotated this since you moved your pivot point, is you go up to Modify with your model selected and Freeze Transformations. That's Modify and Freeze Transformations. And that will freeze all the transform uh, information so that this is the true center of your model. Then something that we should be getting used to is deleting the history and that is edit, delete all by type and history. And that will delete all of the history of the changes that have been made to the individual meshes within this model. This is extremely important when you're bringing this into a viewer or a game engine, as the model may mess up whenever it's brought into Unity. For example, if you create two versions of something by duplicating it and then making some slight changes and you don't delete your history, often when you bring it into Unity, it will merge those uh, two instances of that model because it remembers being the same thing at one stage of its life. To save yourself a lot of heart heartache, regularly go into edit, delete all by type and history unless you have some reason to keep the history around. Then finally for the basic export, we will go to file, export selection, and you can select this wee option button here to get your options up. Under file type, we want an FBX export, that's perfect, and you'll see there are all sorts of different uh, options here for things that you can include. The defaults for us right now will be fine. So I'm going to hit export selection to bring up my main export menu. And you'll see here I can input a file name. Be sure that your file type is FBX export. Another fairly universal one would be OBJ, but for now we're using FBX export. And finally, we're going to take a look at all the options on the right hand side here. So scrolling down under the include and the geometry menu, you'll see smoothing groups we want to keep. And we'll talk about that again in a second. Smooth mess we want to keep. Um, we're going to scroll on down. Animation. I'm not exporting any animation with this, so I don't want a baked animation or any animation checked, so I'll uncheck that. And then you'll see down here there's all sorts of different options, more advanced options, things like cameras and lights and stuff that you can export. So I'm going to detect cameras. I'm going to detect lights because I don't want that. I don't want any audio. I don't have any audio in my scene, but I don't want it. There's media which can be embedded like the um, texture map and things like that. I don't want to do that. I'll bring my texture map in separately anyway, so I'll remove that. Connections is fine. And there's advanced options like units. So I want it automatic because I have modeled this in meters. That's where you can maybe convert that to meters if you've accidentally been modeling this in centimeters the whole time. Okay, so there's a lot of different options there. You just want to make sure that um, everything is exactly as you want it set up. If you use the options I have just ticked or unticked, you will be fine as long as you don't want to export any sounds, cameras, or animations with your model. 
FBX is a very powerful format that can export all of those things with your model, but it can lead to a lot of errors if you have some of these things left in your scene and accidentally selected. And finally, we're going to hit export selection, just making sure we have, I've got the right place, which I don't. Here we go. Okay, and then export. And here you can see I have the diorama mesh saved out in the assets folder that I directed it to. This mesh will be good for bringing into a 3D viewer like Sketchfab or into your game engine like Unity. So now let's talk about troubleshooting and some issues you may encounter, things you need to have set up while you're exporting your model. One issue you may encounter is that you can't select FBX or FBX export in your file types that you can export as. So one way you get around that is by using an OBJ file. Another way is by going to Windows and then Settings Preferences and going into the Plugin Manager. Now the Plugin Manager is all the plugins that help us to do extra stuff in Maya. So I could search down here for the FBX um, exporters or I could just search in the top bar here, FBX, and then let it load that up. And you'll see game FBX exporter.mlll and FBX Maya.mlll should both be loaded and auto loaded into your project. If it isn't, tick both those boxes and then hit refresh. And if it isn't working still, I would exit Maya and boot it back up again. And hopefully those scripts will be running in the background so that you can um, now see about as an FBX. The next potential issue you could have is with those smoothing groups we talked about earlier. So your smoothing groups are what tells um, this uh, cylindrical object here to be smooth in this part but to be hard edged whenever it comes to um, these other edges here so you'll see that by default if i select my model and go up to mesh display and harden edge this is usually the way geometry looks whenever you have completed it you'll see the hard edges rendering up around all of my model here now i went in and meticulously made this inside edge hard so i'm just going to undo this in, in a moment but for now you can see how this would be if i modeled it up naturally from uh, these from cylinders this from uh, cylinder as well actually i modeled this from a cube and you can see all of those angular kind of uh, bits and pieces to it so let's use this claw for an example here now i just want this whole object to be smooth so I'm just going to click um, in I could go into edge mode or what I'm going to do is face mode just to select that entire object because these um, objects are all combined at the moment so all I want to do is look at this first I'm going to select that object and then go up to mesh display and soften edge and then all of the edges around those faces I had selected will now render um, with that soft edge render mode and that will mark those edge groups as uh, edges to be smoothed. Now I could do the same for my stone here. I could double click and I could go to uh, mesh display and soften edge and you'll see the difference here between this stone that I've used soften edge on which looks more natural and then this stone here which I haven't and you can see all of the um, very obvious marks of the geometry on the uh, topology surface. So here's a trickier one with this well. What I've actually done for this is gone into face mode and I have um, mesh display and softened all of that first of all. Okay, and it looks, I'm not getting the, the, the cracks standing out very well on this, so I'm going to select it, go into face, sorry, go into edge, double click the edges that I want to be hardened, and then I'm going to go to mesh display and harden edge. And you'll see the difference that that makes in the viewer. Now that that edge is hardened, it will actually stand out and not be smoothed the way it was before. So I would go into all of those cracks and do that. And then finally, I'll show you with this, um, with certainly with the base, you can notice the um, jaggedness on, on the ground here, and you'll notice it on the side. Uh, so we want to get rid of that and I would just select the entire thing in face mode because I've got these objects combined and I would just go to mesh display and soften edge. So you always want to give your model a once over once you've changed the uh, smoothing grips to make sure you haven't missed anything or that you don't want something to render in a, a different way. So let's finally do this model here. What I would do is start by selecting the entire thing and I'm just going to smooth it all. And you can see it, uh, it, gets it creates some weird artifacting and um, some strange uh, lighting issues with where the uh, cylinder meets these what should be hard edges. So I'm going to go into edge, I'm going to select those edges and I'm going to go to mesh display and then harden edge and you'll see the difference that, that makes to the lighting compared to here where it looks really funny it's trying to smooth over something that should be a hard edge and then here you have this nice hard edge which should be there. Alright so I would just have to go around all my edges double clicking anything that's meant to be a hard edge and holding shift to select multiple and I'm double clicking to select my edge lips. Another important reason for maintaining your edge lips is so that you can do this neatly. If you accidentally click something you can just hold shift and it will minus that edge from it. Just single click on that or double click if it's a loop. And once you've got all those edges selected you can then go to again mesh display and harden edge and you'll instantly see the difference that that makes on the lighting.
So smoothing groups are super important. And as you saw from the FBX exporter, it's baked into your model. So it remembers whether or not to model, render your model nicely like this or to render it um, with all hard edges the way this one is. So set up your smoothing groups before you export your FBX. And last but not least is the material IDs. Material IDs are just a list of materials attached to these objects. Now what I've done is in my UV editor, I've made sure that all of this is on one, it's going to be catered for by one material. Let's say I had some glass objects I wanted to be done with a transparent uh, shader on a separate material or something. I would have them on a different uh, uh, material. Or if I had separate objects, then I would have them obviously using different texture maps and therefore using different materials. So to set up your material IDs, you want to check what um, is currently attached to your model. Um, so to do that, I go into the attribute editor and go to the right hand side and you see all of those soften and harden edges has been remembered in my history. So again, I'm going to go to edit, delete all by type and history to forget all that. And you'll see there's my diorama material that I created. Um, so that material ID is applied to this entire model. If I wanted to attach separate materials to these objects, let's say I want these pillars to be a different material than the rest of the environment. What I would do is first of all, select an object mode, those, uh, the, the entire thing, and then go to mesh and separate, to separate these all into separate objects. I would then grab everything again, hold shift and deselect those so that I've just got these other objects selected. And I'm going to again, combine these mesh and combine. So, these were separate, so I want to, these to use the same material. So what I'm going to do is go to Mesh and Combine. OK, so what we have now is two separate models, two distinct models, but um, they're using the same material. You see it's remembered separate and the Unite there, so I'm just going to go again to Edit, Delete All by Type in History. And now you see Diorama Material is attached to both of these, so it's the same material ID, even though they're two separate models, which is important. If I wanted this to be a separate material, I would have to hold right click and assign a new material, or I could assign an existing material, and you'll see the other materials I have there. Like for instance, I have the detailed material I created in a previous uh, video, Diorama Material 02. If I apply that, you'll see it has extra details added in there. And now you'll see, whenever I select this, Diorama Material 2 is the material ID for this uh, selection of models, and for this one, it is just the first diorama material. Okay, so you have to set what material your uh, mesh is going to use in Maya, and that will also save out in your FBX. To finish off with a quick rundown of the essentials, what I usually do is combine all the objects that I want to um, export together, go up to modify and freeze transformations, go to edit, delete all by type and history, and then file and export selection and I select FBX export. And that is exporting your model for use in a game engine or use in your portfolio viewer, such as Sketchfab.